RV holding tank misconception number one, your tank sensors don't work properly and you should give up all hope of them working properly on a regular basis. Look, I've had my RV for seven years now. It's currently winterized. The valves are open and the tanks are completely empty. And as you can see, the sensors are telling me the tank is empty because the sensors are working properly. RV holding tank misconception number two. When you liquefy solid waste using a black tank treatment, it creates a peanut buttery sludge that prevents your tank sensors from working. The reality is your tank sensors are not working properly because of a chemical reaction that happens in the urine in your tank. Not only are these some of the things that we're going to talk about today, but I wanna cover some scientific facts and give you video proof that these misconceptions are just that, misconceptions. I'm also gonna show you some very simple processes that you can do yourself to keep your tanks odor-free, clog-free, and to keep your tank sensors working perfectly. We've got a good one today. I hope you'll stick around. Over 1.1 million people watched our Black Tank Masterclass video, and with all of those views comes a lot of questions. So today I wanna to answer some of those questions and cover some new material in regards to black tank management. Okay, so let's get started. The first question I wanna talk about today is the question that I've gotten the most, and it's summed up like this. I heard that since a black tank is a holding tank, not a septic system, I shouldn't use or need a black tank treatment that liquefies waste. So yes, a black tank is a holding tank, it's not a septic system, but it's important to understand that we're breaking down solid waste in each system for completely different reasons. So a typical septic system breaks down and digests solid waste so it can be eventually leached into what's called a leach or drain field. In regards to a holding tank, there's a couple reasons we wanna break down solid waste. So the first reason is that liquids will exit the tank quicker and easier than solids will. A universal rule of dumping a holding tank is to wait until it's full. And by the time it's full, there will be enough solid waste and toilet paper in that tank to have the potential to start to clump together and cause clogs. Another reason is as the water level lowers and the tank drains, the flow rate at which the water is exiting the tank will slow down and solids will stick to the bottom of the tank. Even if your RV is tilted towards the drain pipe, not all solids will exit the tank on the first dump. So to prove this, I wanna show you a video. My friend James from the Fit RV, great RV YouTube channel, by the way, check them out. I'll put links down below. Anyway, a while back, they made a black tank video using an external see-through tank. After a tank dump, you can clearly see the solids left at the bottom of the tank. This tank is even tilted towards the drain pipe. So if you're at a dump station that isn't level, imagine what is still left in your tank if it's tilted the other way. Even if all of the solids make their way to the drain pipe, as the tank empties, the water flow decreases, and now you run the risk of getting a clog, not just in front of the pipe, but inside the drain pipe as well. And this is another reason we wanna liquefy waste. And guys, you can test this out yourself. The next time you're at a campsite with a sewer hookup, dump your black tank, fill it back up with about five or 10 gallons of water, and dump again. I guarantee you the second time you dump, you're gonna see toilet paper and or solid waste come through your sewer elbow. You're gonna to have to refill and dump multiple times to get everything out if you can get everything out. And who knows how many times you're gonna to have to fill and dump to get that solid waste to go out. So with everything said and the video evidence that we've looked at today, the easiest way to get the solid waste out of the RV is to liquefy it and let the liquid run out of the tank. So back to the original question, should I use a black tank chemical that liquefies waste? My answer is still yes. I'm always using a black tank chemical to liquefy waste. It's gonna get waste out of the tank much easier. Okay, let's move to the next question we get a lot. You liquefy the waste in your tank, but now your black tank treatment has turned everything to a peanut buttery sludge which coats the walls of the tank and the sensors and prevents the sensors from working. If you use your black tank correctly, this is not going to be what prevents your sensors from working and it's not going to create a film inside your tank that can't be easily cleaned. Guys, my RV is proof of this. I've had this RV for seven years. I've always used a black tank treatment and my sensors work perfectly. Now we will talk about how to clean your sensors a little bit later in the video. You should be starting the process by always putting about 10% of your black tank capacity in water. Use a lot of water when you flush. And by the time you're ready to dump your tank, the ratio to solids and water, if you're using a lot of water, just isn't gonna be enough to permanently coat anything. You have already seen proof of this. When is the last time you dumped your black tank 
and you've noticed a peanut buttery sludge slowly creeping through your clear elbow. And unless you're using little to no water, you're never gonna see this happen. Now, liquefying your waste will slightly increase the thickness of the contents of the tank, but it's nowhere near a sludge. No matter what you do, after you dump, your black tank is never going to be spotless. Now, there are a couple things that you can do after you dump a tank to help keep it clean. One thing is to run your black tank flush port for a couple minutes. Those are not high pressure jets, but they do provide a pretty good rinse of the walls on the inside of the tank. If you don't have a black tank flush port on your RV, you can buy one of those nozzles that you stick down the toilet. Those will also provide a good rinse. I'll put a link to one down below. Something else you can do to rinse your black tank after a dump is to just fill it up and let the water soak in there for a couple minutes and then dump it out again. Every once in a while, I will fill my black tank up all the way with water before we go to bed and let it soak overnight. I'll then dump my tank in the morning, add my 10% back in, add my black tank treatment, and I'm good to go. Guys, it is never going to be spotless inside your black tank, even after a professional clean. Now, I'm not against having a tank hydro jetted. It's a great way to deep clean the inside of your tank. I just don't think it's necessary as much as they want you to think it is. Okay, so there's no peanut buttery sludge in your tank. So what is causing your tank sensors to fail? It's something called struvite. It comes from a natural process when ammonia, phosphate, and magnesium combine, they precipitate, and they form crystals. All of these ingredients are found in urine. So a lot of people have asked me if using a product like a laundry detergent or a fabric softener will help coat the inside of the tank so nothing sticks to it. I've never used those products in my RV black tank, but I have heard a lot of people that have had success with those products. At the end of the day, I just don't think it's that simple. Struvite is a very common problem in wastewater systems infrastructure, and it was discovered a long time before RVs were even invented. So it forms like a crystal, and if the environment doesn't change, it will continue building on top of itself, and it will stick to everything on the inside of the tank, no matter what you coat it with. The tank sensor issue is probably because of struvite and not because you're using a black tank treatment that liquefies waste. It is a natural process, so I don't think it's something that you can completely avoid, but there are ways to manage it. Consistently rinsing your tank, like we talked about earlier in the video, will definitely help. I also found a lot of articles talking about the use of muriatic acid to descale a wastewater tank. That's something I wanna look into a little bit further. What I did find, though, was a lot of information using Ridlime to clean and descale their tanks. What I can tell you that has worked for us for seven years, follow all the steps in the Black Tank Masterclass video, use a lot of water, rinse as much as you can. If your sensors are at a point where they're still not working after a couple rinses, you're gonna probably wanna descale your tank. Now, I have not done this because I have not needed to do this to my tank, but a lot of things that I'm researching are pointing towards Ridlime as a great option for descaling. It's safe on plastic and rubber, so it won't damage your tank or the seals in your tank, but if your sensors are still not working after that, it's probably time for a good hydro jet. So on to the next question. Our black tank is not a septic system. It is a holding tank. So why do I recommend using septic safe toilet paper? So the simple answer is this. Septic safe toilet paper breaks down quicker. It won't clump together. And if it does stick on your sensors, it will wash off in a rinse. You do not need to spend the additional money on an RV safe toilet paper because honestly, guys, it is just an expensive gimmick. Just get yourself a septic safe toilet paper. We use two ply and have never had a problem. So if you're enjoying or learning something from this video, please let us know by clicking that like button down below, leaving us a comment, and we hope that you consider subscribing. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's talk about tank treatments for a second. Now there's manufactured treatments that you can purchase. There's also treatments you can make using a combination of different ingredients. I have only ever used manufactured treatments and the two that I've used were Happy Campers and Aquachem and both worked fine, but I recently switched over to a product called Liquified. And honestly, the reason I switched was because Matt from Matt's RV Reviews asked me if I would try it out. And Matt is not paying me to talk about his product, but I am happy with it, and I wouldn't recommend it to you guys if I wasn't. For me personally, I just use a manufactured product because it's just easier. But I encourage all of you to research and experiment different recipes, manufactured products, and try and find out what works best for you. I would recommend getting something or making something that breaks down solid waste. Whatever it is you decide on, I can promise you this. There is not a tank treatment on the planet that is going to completely deodorize 
a box with five days of human waste in it. It does not exist. But the vapor barrier you create by leaving a couple inches of water over your ball valve is going to help out with that. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. It's actually a comment, and this is something that I did not know way back when I created the Black Tank Masterclass video. A few viewers had actually mentioned that their bathroom sink drains into their black tank. In my opinion, this is one of the dumbest things RV manufacturers have come up with. Now, traditionally, sinks and showers drain into gray tanks and your toilet drains into your black tank. Now, it's technically not a problem that you're putting more water in your black tank. More water is always better, but the problem is you're filling your black tank quicker. This means you're dumping your black tank more, you're using more black tank treatment, and there's a possibility for an overflow, especially if you didn't know that your plumbing was set up to drain your bathroom sink into your black tank. Dear RV manufacturers, stop doing this. Sinks should drain into gray tanks, toilets into black tanks. It messes with our system. If you're not sure, the easiest way to find out is just dump all of your tanks, close everything up, but then open your black tank valve, run your bathroom sink for a couple minutes, and if you start seeing water coming through your clear elbow, then you know the bathroom sink is dropping water into your black tank. If you know a good reason why RV manufacturers are doing this, please let me know down in the comments. Again, it's never bad putting additional water in the black tank, but RVers are diligently using a lot of water already, so I don't know why RV manufacturers would do this. Another question we get a lot is how do I use my black tank flush port? So it's a pretty simple process. First, your black tank does need to be empty because the sprayer on the inside of the black tank needs to hit the walls and that won't happen if there's water in the tank. You need to make sure that you're connected to a sewer and also your black tank drain valve needs to be open. Just connect the hose to the flush port and turn it on. Now, some people ask me if they should use a separate hose other than their drinking water hose to connect to their black tank flush port. It is a good idea to have a separate hose for your black tank flush port. However, there are check valves and vacuum breakers between where you connect your hose and the actual inside of the tank. So you shouldn't have any backflow that's going to contaminate your drinking water hose. But if you wanna be safe, just get an additional hose for your black tank flush port. After you turn the water on, just monitor the water flow at your clear elbow. It'll probably be milky brown for a little bit. Once it starts to clear up, you're done. Again, these black tank flush ports are not high pressure water jets, but they will do a pretty good job of rinsing the walls of the inside of the tank. One purpose of this video is to let you know what I have done and what has worked for me. The second purpose of this video is to highlight what I personally think is one of the most important things you can do to maintain your black tank. I think we know by now that keeping a lot of water in your black tank is important. That's gonna help with things like the poop pyramid, and keeping everything in that tank diluted. Because the drain pipe in a black tank is on the side of the tank instead of the bottom of the tank, guys, it's inevitable. You're gonna have something at the bottom of that tank. That is either going to be solids that we showed video proof of earlier in this video or liquefied solids. And that's really the reason I recommend liquefying your solid waste. It's much easier to get out of the tank. The solids are gonna have to catch a ride with the water flow to exit the tank. And until that happens, solid waste is going to remain in the tank. And I honestly believe the best way to manage that is to rinse the tank often. But I encourage you to try out different products and different processes and find out what works best for you. I hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.